Hello fam, these are our video solutions for can you do 45. For one and two, you'd probably be fine just to uh, freeze my solutions and check mine against yours. I'm really making video solutions for the influential points because I thought some explanation might be helpful for those problems. So for A, I have that Ya Yu Na Kim's actual free skate score is 28.64 points less than expected based on the short program score. For B, I have that a linear model is appropriate because they gave us the residual plot and there's no leftover pattern. Then for C and D, I followed my phrases to memorize very closely, so there should be no surprises there. The one thing that I do want to highlight is make sure that on S you have units. So your 10.2 points from the actual free skate score. And on D that your R squared is written as a percent. It always must be written as a percent. For age and height, I, this problem troubled me at first because... I was concerned about how the scatter plot doesn't have points all over, that our points are stacked at the certain ages, uh, but that's okay. It's still considered a scatter plot, even though we see that there are, um, that our points align vertically at each age. The reason for that is because we don't typically record age as a continuous number. So we would never say you're 10.1 years old or you're 10 and three quarters old. We usually just say the year we're at regardless of where we are at in the year. So that's why in the scatter plot you're seeing all of the points at discrete values or whole number values. That's okay. So that means here if you look at this residual plot even though there is a pattern in that our points are stacked at the specific ages, it's still a random scatter. The only reason that you're seeing this, these vertical lines is because of the way age is recorded and not because there's some leftover pattern or relationship. So my residual for A is 7.2 less than expected. I got that a linear model is appropriate because there's no leftover pattern. The vertical, the vertical lines at each age would not be considered a leftover pattern. Uh, for S, make sure that you have units. So I have that it's 8.61 centimeters from actual height. And for R squared, once again, make sure that you have it written as a percent. Now moving into influential points. I just want to take a moment and speak to you about influential points before we get into our last few problems. So there are some things in math and stats that in general I think either it's a concept that you get right off the bat or it's something that you really struggle with. I typically think that any student can learn anything if they're willing to put in the time. But some things, either you get it right away or it is a struggle to understand it. And influential points are that way. I think that the con concept behind them either really makes sense to you or every single time you do a problem, you're really questioning and struggling to figure out what the effect is. If you are struggling, it's totally okay. There are so many things in the unit for linear regression that if you struggle with this one thing, it's not going to severely affect your test score and it's not going to um, affect your ability to pass the exam. You're going to have many opportunities to show your learning. So if influential points is something you really struggle with, I would not waste any time, any stress, anything on trying to understand it. If you get it, awesome. But if you are super struggling with this, focus more on making sure that you've memorized the phrases that you need to use to interpret different values and don't spend time on trying to figure out influential points. 
Um, yeah, so if you're struggling, it's okay. Do the best you can and let it go. Trust me. Okay, so I, I think it's probably best if I just let you look at, maybe pause the video and compare my table to your table. Um, I just want to explain what I have in purple. So if you want to pause the video and check, you can. Uh, but if, if not, then I'm going to talk about what's in purple. So I highlighted the ones where my prediction was wrong. I, my ones that I have in purple, the prediction that I made was different than what really happened. So I highlighted them because when I go to study for this unit, I want to remind myself of my misunderstanding so that it doesn't happen again. So on letter C, on this point, I thought that S was going to be about the same. I didn't think S was going to change all that much because it was so close to the line. But what I didn't take into consideration is that C is closer to the line then this point, and this point, and this point. So S really decreased because it is closer to the line than some of the original scatter plot points. So that is one of the mistakes that I made. On D, I got the slope wrong. So what I was thinking for D was when you add this point, it was going to make your scatter plot steeper. So I thought slope was going to increase because that this point was like going to pull that line toward it. But really what happens is that it's just going to pull this regression line closer to it. Slope's going to stay about the same but the line is going to move toward the outlier. And the reason why that is, is because this is an outlier because it has a large residual. It's not an outlier in the x values. Because it is with the other points, it is in the same x values as our original scatter plot, it just pulls the line down. It doesn't affect slope at all. If it would have been out here, or maybe over here on the zero, it probably would have changed slope. But because it is in the values where the other x values are, it just pulls the line down. And we do have an example of that in our notes. So I thought that it was going to increase. It was approximately the same. Then the last one that I wanted to mention was point G. So on point G, I had the slope wrong. And I think the reason that I had the slope wrong was because I knew that it was going to change signs. I knew it was going to go from positive to negative. But I think that I thought the line was going to be more steep. And then I started to really think about it, and I couldn't decide. I, I can't had a hard time determining whether the slope would increase or decrease. All I really knew was that it was going to change signs. And that is a really good idea for us to discuss very quickly. Some of you guys would say for sure that the slope decreases because you're going from a positive number to a negative number. So you're thinking about slope mathematically. You're saying, that a negative number is always smaller than a positive number, so slope decreases. And what we're talking about in stats is the steepness of the slope. Does your steepness increase or decrease? Because remember, the sign tells you the direction. It's not an indication of value. So you had a, a lesson quiz question on this. And some of you guys thought that the slope decreased because it went from like negative one half to negative two thirds and mathematically negative two thirds is a decrease.
but conceptually in terms of the steepness of your line, if it's more steep, it would be an increase, and if it's less steep, it would be a decrease. So I have this one in purple because it would be really hard to know without the actual data. It would be really hard for me to make a decision on what was going to happen to slope. All I would be able, me personally, all I would feel comfortable saying is that I know the sign will change, that the line will go from a positive association to a negative association. I had somebody ask in class for correlation. How could our correlation be negative, but then our R squared is positive? So mathematically speaking, it is uh, 0 0.61 squared. A negative times a negative turns into a positive. Conceptually speaking, this is the strength of your relationship and the direction. So this is a negative weak association, or maybe moderate, a negative moderate association. This is a percentage, and percentages can never be negative. So this is direction and strength. So it would be, make sense to be negative if the association was negative. This is a percentage. It will never be negative. Hopefully that helps. If you have any questions on this, um, as usual, you can send me an email, a video email, or ask in class. But like I said, if, if you are like, I have no idea what we're even doing here, do the best that you can and focus on the things that you feel really good about or things that you feel better about. Maybe not good about, but better than this about. Okay, two more questions. Which of the following statements about influential points are true? So I had to use deduction for this one. Looking at residual, looking at a residual plot is an excellent way of picking out influential points. No. We did not discuss that in our lesson. We did not factor in res residual plots at all. We did talk about an outlier in terms of its residual, but that we never discussed that in terms of the residual plot and what it would look like. Removal of an influential point sharply affects the regression line. Well, I don't know. Sometimes it affects R. Like, I, I, in our notes, I seem to remember thinking, well, it can affect slope, y-intercept, or correlation. So does this mean that every influential point is going to affect slope and y-intercept? I, I don't know for sure. Then C, determining a regression model with and without a point is an excellent way of picking out influential points. This is for sure true. You've had questions where it says, what happens if you will, if you remove the point? And then I made you do a bunch of problems where I had you add in the point. So yes, three is definitely true, which means that it has to be B or C, because I know for sure that three is true. So I chose C, because I'm not sure if this is true, but I'm 100% sure three is true and I'm 100% sure one is false. So C, two and three has to be the correct answer. The number five was a big challenge for me. In fact, it was so big that I had to Google this problem. I legitimately put this whole paragraph into Google found the data set that goes with this scatter plot and took this point out because I was having such a hard time deciding what happened to some of these values. So if you're in the A days, you didn't get this set up, so I'll read it to you. A data set included the number of people per television set and the number of people per physician for 40 countries. The Fathom screenshot below displays a scatter plot of the data with the least squares regression line added. In Ethiopia, there were four, 503 people per TB and 36,660 people per doctor. What effect would removing this point have on, and then it gives you all of the things. So, slope. I felt like 
the slope. So let me let me think of let me remind myself of this really quick. Okay, I remembered. So in my mind, if we remove this point, our line is going to become flatter. So I felt really good about slope and y-intercept. I felt confident that slope would decrease because the line is flatter, and I felt pretty confident that y-intercept would increase because when that line flattened out, that would cause it to go up on the y-axis. I really shouldn't draw my lines like that because it makes it a little bit harder to see. So I thought the line was going to do something like that. Then the other one that I felt really good about was S. I felt like S would decrease for sure because this point is so far away from the regression line. But R and R squared really did it to me. R and R squared is what caused me to want to find the data set and really figure out what happened, and here's why. A point that has a very large residual will weaken R. So this being so far away from the line of prediction weakens R. But it is also an outlier in the X direction, which strengthens R. So I didn't know what the overall effect would be if I took the point out because one of the things would weaken R and the other thing would strengthen R and how am I to know which one would end up being more? And that's what I have written down here. R would be really hard to determine without knowing or seeing the new regression line. The large residual of the outlier weakens R but the unusually large x value strengthens r. So when you take it out, what will the overall effect be? Turns out that r decreases. r decreases. Let me make sure that I'm not lying. They give us r squared here. So we need to find the root of 0.38. Yeah, so this had a correlation of 6, 2. So R did decrease. And then the new line of regression, um, the y-intercept goes from to 1,700, and the slope decreases by a lot. So right here, they give you the regression line. Right there, that's the regression line. So y-intercept goes from 1,400 to 1,750. Slope goes from about 30 to 7. This, this is a really good uh, spot for me to reiterate. Influential points, sometimes it's hard for things to be black and white, just like I'm saying on this problem that I just talked about. I would have a really hard time knowing what happened to R and R squared, and if I got that on a free response problem, I would say that. I would say exactly what I have written here on my paper. R would be really hard to determine without knowing or seeing the new regression line because one of the, the things about the influential part point, sorry, weakens R, and the other thing strengthens R, and I don't know what the overall effect would be. I would just write that. Um, that being said, if this is like, like I said, what is happening? What are you doing? This is so complicated. I don't get it at all. Please really trust me when I say, do the best that you can. Focus on other things. Focus on things you feel good about or focus on things that you feel better about than this and that you think that you could get better if you spent more time on it. Do not worry about this. Please don't feel like you have to understand this perfectly to be successful on our tests or the AP tests. It's great if it's an understanding that you have, but if it's a struggle for you, 
You got to let it go and focus on things that you feel better about. Uh, as usual, if there are questions, email me or ask me in class. Uh, if I've made a mistake, somebody will let me know and I will do my best to get it fixed. I think that that's it. So hopefully this was helpful. Love you guys.